Welcome to my new video on deep learning. Uh, this video is going to focus a little bit more on neural networks. We're going to dig into some of the concepts of a neural network and then we're going to build out a neural network model, uh, train it to recognize images. Uh, before we get into the coding aspect of this, I want to walk through a couple of the concepts uh, to bring everybody up to speed with those. So let's assume, uh, or let's say we're going to want to predict the price of a car. We have a car here, for example. It's got a few properties that could be used as input to determine what the price could be. Color, the miles per gallon, the engine size, and things like that. In this example, we've got blue car here, and it's, it's uh, pretty streamlined. It's probably doing decent miles per gallon, etc. But then if we kind of wanted to evaluate the price of a car and we wanted to build out a model, we'd have to pass in other cars as well. So let's pass in uh, a different type of car. The properties and features of this other car could also determine the price in terms of the miles per gallon, the color, also the engine size, the speed, etc. Um, but then other, th other factors come into play, so the more you think about it, the more you realize other factors, and there's a large number of them that could potentially affect the price. What about the age of the car, for example? Will this older car over here be worth, cause it to be worth more or less than the car on the right? So really when you think about it, there's a large number of parameters that could be used as inputs or features, if you will, to determine or predict the price. Um, and so it's a matter of understanding which of those are ones that you want to use going forward. In this example, trying to predict the price of a car, let's take four uh, key features of cars that potentially could be used to determine the price. So let's just take these four properties here. There's obviously other properties as well of cars, but for this illustration and example, we're just going to use these four properties. We've got engine size, we have color, we have year, and we have mileage. These are the inputs, and we're really trying to use those to predict the price. So we'll have a set of data that has these, uh, this information about cars defined, and we'll have a set of data that also has the price of cars. So the machine learning uh, model will be able to learn. So there's no point having this if we don't, don't know price of any cars, because we're never going to really know what to do. So with these, we've got these, these inputs, and we've got a known price. Uh, and then we basically want to apply a weight to each of these to get as close to that price as possible. And across that set of data, there's going to be uh, weights that we want to apply. And we want to choose the weights that match uh, the closest across all of them to use to one that we don't know the price of. So these weights will be numeric values that we apply to each of these to uh, lend weight to those properties, for example. In, in this case, we're seeing that the year has the highest weight, so more power is given to the year in predicting the price. So based on the year, you're going to get closer to the price versus having something like mileage or engine size. They're less uh, relevant to the price. There are obviously factors in it, but the year is uh, definitely a key driver here. And so what we're seeing is what we will do is we'll apply those weights to that and it will get as close to the price as possible. Now, when we think about this, though, there's many different weights that we can apply. Um, different cars and different aspects of cars may have elements that affect things differently. So maybe in a few, few cars, the year is more important, but then maybe in some cars, color and engine size is more important. And so machine learning, the algorithms are used, uh, help determine what those weights are. And so really you walk through those weights and in a neural network, this concept works in a way where we want to be able to apply different weights, get these prices. And so we can apply different weights, get a bunch of different prices, but then those prices we want to kind of come together and drive into a different model over here. So we take all of those interim prices that we created and got to and then map those again with another set of weights to get to that final price. So essentially what we're doing here is adding an extra step where we kind of predict a temporary price using a set of weights. We then change the weights and get a bunch of other prices. Uh, and then we kind of apply weights to those to kind of get to that final price. Um, and this allows us to take into, fact, into account things like different cars and may have different variables that are more, more important. And so we can kind of get a little bit more accurate across the whole data set. By adding in this additional layer here with uh, prices, we basically create a, created a layer within or between input and output. So we've got input, we've got a layer one here, and then we've got output. And that's really the essence of what a neural network is. If we look at it drawn out here, essentially, that's what we're doing. We're adding this uh, middle layer or the hidden layer, as it's known in, in neural network terms, uh, to kind of get extra information about prices and then kind of consolidate that out again to a final price. Now, it's worth noting with a neural network that as we do this, you can have many of these layers, and that's where you get a deep neural network. So if you want to be more accurate and, and do more mappings, you can get quite complex with this and have a variety of layers in between the input and the output. But really, at its core, this is what a neural network looks like. We're mapping out those different weights that we're applying to that hidden layer, and then we're kind of mapping those again with some additional weights to kind of get to that final price for a prediction. 
So let's turn this to a more concrete example here. So let's say we want to classify some images. This is a, a screenshot of some images from the uh, MNIST uh, dataset, which is handwritten digits from 0 to 9, collection of images that people have handwritten out. And uh, let's say we want to use machine learning uh, and neural networks to classify these and be able to pass in a handwritten image to classify this. To say, if I write the, uh, the number 2, it'll detect that and tell me that it's a number 2. So how does this work? So, first of all, if you think back to the first video, this is a classification problem, and there's 10 categories, 10 classes, if you will, 0 through 9. Those are the outputs. The input's going to be an image, though. So how do we even begin here? So images at their core are just pixels, uh, and those pixels can be turned into an array of numbers. So if we take a 3, for example, here, map it out, and in this case, the images are going to be 28 by 28 pixels. So we map those out here, and where the uh, number 3 is uh, captured by certain pixels, it's going to change the value of that pixel. So ones that are maybe white and don't have anything in it may be 0, and then others may be have higher values depending on what it is. If it's a color image, there may be three values, such as red, green, blue. But in this case, black and white, maybe it's uh, 0 and 1, depending on what it is, or depending on the grayscale uh, metric. But essentially, you can convert that image into a, an array about, uh, containing information about all of the pixels in it. So if we think back, so now that we know that we've converted to pixels, how does this work? So essentially, if you thought, think back before when we had our car, we had properties such as engine size, color. In this, in this world, those properties are just going to be pixels. And because it's 28 by 28, that's 784 pixels, there's going to be 784 inputs into this. So we're going to be applying weights to each of those. Uh, and we're using machine learning to kind of walk through what all the different weight options are uh, to kind of get us to the class that it is. So we're going to have a set of known images, and we're going to have a set of known classes for those between 0 and 9. And we're going to then basically apply weights to the pixels to kind of be able to allow us to pass in a new image, convert it to the pixel array, and then estimate what the, or predict what the class is going to be. So essentially, that's how it's going to work. The inputs are going to be each of those pixels. So let's jump in and do this. So before we do that, what framework are we going to use? There's a variety out there that help make uh, deep learning and neural networks very easy. There's TensorFlow you may have heard of uh, from Google. There's Theano, Cafe, Torch. There's plenty of others that I'm probably missing on here. And we also have the Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit, the CNTK. Uh, we're going to leverage the CNTK for this. Um, it's uh, going to be using Python. Uh, to drive this, but again, there's others out there that do very similar things, and the concepts that you see that we use through CNTK could potentially be applied uh, using TensorFlow or others as well. Um, so you can certainly kind of interchange them, and you can see they've got basically a very similar set of libraries. We're going to be using the Microsoft CNTK going forward throughout this series to build out some of these models. So we're going to be using Jupyter Notebooks for this. Uh, this is an image classification problem, so let's give it a title here. I'm using the Azure hosted uh, Jupyter Notebooks, but you can certainly use your own hosted ones or host somewhere else hosted elsewhere. First step, uh, we're going to be using the MNIST dataset. This is a dataset of uh, images that have been handwritten to between 0 and 9 digits. Um, we're going to use that. So to do this, we're going to download those. So I'm going to import some Python libraries here to help with that. I'm also going to leverage uh, some helper functions that were pre-written. These essentially are just going to go out and uh, download those images um, because those are split into training, uh, split into features and uh, test, uh, features and labels as well as training and tests. So we're going to kind of take those, combine them into two sets of data uh, that we can then load in pretty quickly, which are going to be pixels uh, and the labels themselves. So that's what these functions are doing here. There's nothing too nefarious about them. They're just unzipping some, some files, gzip files, and then uh, converting that into text files that we're going to then use to load in later on for our batching process uh, when we train the model. <clears throat> so at this point, let's go grab um, a couple of pieces of code here to uh, call that load function. Uh, first, we'll want to define a couple of variables for the uh, storing the training and test paths information. So let's just create those paths here. So we're just going to store the labels and features for training and the labels and features for test um, into a text file that then we can easily load into the CNTK library uh, to leverage that for training and testing purposes. So now we're just going to go ahead and call the load function with the URLs from where those MNIST data sets are sitting. These are 28 by 28 images. There's a whole collection of them here uh, split into training and test, and each of those are split into uh, uh, features and labels. And so we're just basically taking the features and labels for each, combining them to a single file, and then uh, essentially going to be uh, saving that out there. Doing the same for test as well. So as you can see here, basically we're creating two files as outputs of this, which are then going to be used as inputs later on. So here it's going to go ahead, start streaming that down, downloading those here. Now that that's done, 
Let's import the CNTK libraries here. So we've got the uh, CNTK libraries being imported, as you see here. Um, learning a few other functions from CNTK they're going to leverage throughout this uh, neural network creation. So now let's first define some variables. If you think about it, it's 28 by 28 pixels, that's 784. So our first uh, input dimension is going to be 784 uh, in terms of size. And then classes, we have uh, output uh, size will be 10. There's 10 classes, 0 through 9. So let's define that here. In terms of hidden layers, uh, if you remember back when we were just talking about the layers, we're just going to have one for this one. It's a very simple neural network. It's not complicated. It's not a deep neural network, uh, but you can certainly make it so. Uh, the more layers you have, the more complexity you add, the slower the training will be, but potentially the more accurate it could be or the potential uh, to do more complex uh, manipulation. In terms of kind of how many hidden inputs you want to use, uh, so we're going to just basically uh, define this. This is kind of that mapping of weights. How many how many different weights do we want to try out? Uh, let's define a, a, something reasonable here. Again, that's something you could modify or increase or decrease depending on what you're trying to do. We're just going to define 200 for this. Now we need to create a couple of variables, placeholders if you will, for, uh, for CNTK to imp uh, have inputs both for the features and for the labels. I'm just going to define those here. So we're just defining that based on the input dimensions. It's going to be uh, input dim here and then float32 will be the type here we want to use. We'll define the same for labels, so a very similar process, but we'll just use the output classes here. Um, so this is going to be num output classes, and again we'll just use mpfloat32 for this. So it's defined two placeholders that will be used uh, for the input um, variable for training purposes. So we've got feature on label and our model. Alright, so now what we want to do is we want to use the scale, uh, we want to create a scaled input here. So this is basically essentially just scaling that feature set. Um, so that it's normalized. We're going to be using a sequential model here. This is creating that model that we're going to then train. We've kind of passed in a bunch of variables here, input dimensions, layers, uh, etc. So they've been kind of defined. This is the model that's then been defined. And we're passing in that in the scaled input that we just scaled up there as well. And this is for just scaling so that the, the values are normalized and uh, aren't wildly different from each other. So here we're just going to add the cross entropy function, the softmax function, which is kind of manipulating the weights, and also the classification error as well. So we define those with the model that we're passing in. So now we define a, a mini batch source from the CNTK, CNTK library. This is going to essentially just read from that flip file the features and labels from it as a stream uh, for the test data set. We created a reader train. Uh, variable to hold that, and this is going to stream from that text file into these badges. So this will allow us to then, when we train a model, take batches of that data because it could be a large amount, we don't want to do it all at once, and so that kind of sets that streaming piece up. So we we'll define that here. Now we want to be able to just kind of define some uh, input map that we're going to pass into our uh, model that we're going to train. Just going to split between features and labels, and these we've already defined earlier. So essentially, we're now just saying that. We're taking the features from the reader train, and then we're going to take the labels from the reader train here. So essentially, we're just uh, doing that here. So we have features and then label. We're just going to split that up here. And this input map array, if you will, is what we're going to pass then into the uh, model that we then train. Here, we're just going to define a couple of parameters uh, for our training purpose, uh, what is our batch size, uh, how much data do we want to pass in in each batch, and how many times do we want to, how many batches do we want to run through, and then per, ba per, per batch how many samples do we want to kind of take. So these again are variables that you can tweak and, and modify depending on what you're trying to train, depending on how much power, obviously the more batches you do, or the larger the batches you do, or the longer it could take, or the more power you need from a computing perspective. Um, so those are things you have to think about as you do this. Often you want to batch up the data because you may have a large amount of data and it's not all something you can use all at once to train your model. Also, the more times it trains, then, the, then, then potentially the more accurate it gets. Here we're just going to do 10 sweeps through that, uh, so batch size of uh, been defined there. We want to then also just add in a progress writer. This is just a printer to print out information. Let's just define a couple of other things here. So we define the learning rate. Uh, and then define the trainer itself, which passes in the model and then the cross entropy and the classification error, as well as kind of the uh, uh, functions that we want to use and the learning rate in terms of how it's going to learn those weights that we talked about before. And then we also pass in the progress writer, which is going to be what's printing out information as it starts training. So at this point, everything's defined and we can kind of kick off this training. So we can kind of basically create here 
uh, the training model and just call train on it, passing in all of the different variables that we need um, to kind of kick that off. So at this point, we start doing that training. So now, as we can see, it's going to output some stuff using the progress printer, and it's going to do this 10 times. There's 10 epochs, if you will, uh, 10 sweeps through this data set. And so it's going through these, and you see the loss function is pretty key, and you'll notice it keeps reducing as it goes through, which is great, because it means as it goes through each, each one, it's learning more and more, it's getting more and more accurate, the lower the loss function, uh, then, then the more accurate, the, uh, the more predictive the model is. All right, so we finished training the model here. We've gone from a 0.38 down to a 0.06, which is great, so we've definitely improved the, uh, the, uh, the predictive nature of the model as it's done the training. Obviously, if we did more, maybe get lower. At some point, it'll probably start leveling off. Now we want to test this with the test data set, so we're going to do a very similar process here. We're going to use uh, create another mini batch source in the same vein that we did for the te uh, training data, we're doing for the test data, so we're going to stream it from the test text file, uh, which was a path we defined before. We're going to create an input map and map the test features to that. But then instead of doing training on it, we're just going to call um, we're going to call the uh, trainer .test mini batch here to kind of do that. So we're going to loop through the data in the batches, we're going to test those, we're going to take the uh, evaluation error, we're going to sum that up and then take the average of that. As we run it here, we see it's about 0.22. Not too bad. Um, not, not could be better perhaps, um, but that's not doing too bad, so the model's uh, pretty, pretty, performing pretty well. So now the ultimate test. Let's take an image that's never seen, that's not been part of any of this data set, something that I've handwritten. So I've got something I did in the paint program here. I drew a number uh, in that, and so let's pass that in. So let's go upload that file here. So if I upload it, I've got a number 3. Here that I define, so let's go just take a look at this preview. It's something that looks like a number three, as you can see. It's 28 by 28 pixels to make it simple. Uh, we're going to open that here. So that's going to just upload this file to my instance, so then I can then leverage that. So I'll just copy that file path here to use. I'm going to just import a quick library here to uh, do uh, the mapping of that image and flattening it so we can kind of create the pixel array that we need. So I'm just going to import that here, SciPy so library, to do that flattening using the ND image function from there. And essentially all we're doing here is loading that image in and just flattening it so it represents the right shape that we can pass into our model. So we create this data function. If we take a look at that data function here real quick, you'll see it's basically gone through that image and, and wherever it's seeing kind of the gray pixels, it's kind of flagging those up. You know, and where it's not, it's, it's kind of that. And there you've got the label there as well. So now let's uh, test this out. Um, so from CNTK, I could certainly take the model I've just created and save it to file. If I wanted to do that, then I could call the load model function here to load that back in. So if I was doing this in production, I'd probably be using the load model to load this in as a production kind of model to then use. Um, in this case, that's, that's not needed, but here we just call load model here, pass in the file name of where that model exists, uh, and it would load it up. So at some point I can always save that uh, model and then reuse it over and over again. We're not doing that here because uh, we haven't saved the model, we'll just use Z, which is the model that we trained, and we'll just call eval on that. So to do this, uh, let's create a variable called prediction, um, pred here, and we'll just call z.eval, and then pass in the data that we just loaded, that image, essentially, that's basically the collection of those pixels mapped out. So we're going to pass that in uh, on, into the named input data uh, feature. So pass that in. As you can see, that's the uh, variable that we just looked at. Uh, and then we'll just run that. This is giving me a warning uh, here, nothing to worry about. And then let's just take a look at the, uh, the predicted class here. So what did it predict? So if you remember the image was a 3, so hopefully this maps out to a 3, but let's see. So if we do this, let's see how well it did. If we take the uh, MP argmax, uh, print that out. Let's just take a look. As you can see, predicted a 3. So as you can see, we've created a very, in a, in a short space of time, we've created a very uh, simple model, but it's doing some complex things here. It's, it's learned how to classify images to some degree, obviously. Uh, it's not you know, the greatest model, we didn't spend a long time training it, so it's not going to be a, that accurate, but it's going to be accurate enough. You can see it's already predicting some of the things that are passing in here. Um, but really hopefully this gives you a taste of how easy it is to start moving forward and creating your own models. So next uh, time we look at this, we can, we'll look at some more complex scenarios, but this was a very basic scenario, but there's no reason you couldn't take in some of your own images here, or maybe your own things, and then have, have it training in a similar way. Hopefully it's giving you a flavor of how easy it is to kind of convert some of this and get some very powerful learnings right out of the box.